Hey everybody, I hope you're having an amazing day today. My name is Mercer and today we are going to be doing something a bit different than we normally do. Today I'm going to be giving predictions for every future episode of Death Battle. Specifically the ones that have been confirmed. Ruby vs. Maka Albarn or Ruby Rose vs. Maka Albarn. Dio Brando vs. Alucard, Wiz vs. Boomstick, Galaxus vs. Unicron, and I'm not entirely sure if Sans vs. The Judge is confirmed. Um, and I'm not sure if Cole McGrath versus Alex Mercer is confirmed, but I'm gonna make my separate video for Sans versus the Judge because I feel like I wanted to go into a lot with that one, and we will be including Cole McGrath versus Alex Mercer just because it's just too glorious to ignore. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. Boomstick versus Wiz. I feel like this fight is going to be more of a joke fight than anything. I frankly think that Rooster Teeth won't go into making a winner just because these two are both beloved by Death Battle fans. But I might as well go into which character has which. We know for certain that Boomstick has a shotgun for a leg, as he repeatedly says, and has access to numerous different guns. Also, in the All Might vs. Mike Guy episode, he has the ability to somewhat make food out of his hands, specifically California rolls and can spawn lobsters. Yeah, they don't go into that very well. Also, he has numerous different blades on his leg and has access to some different characters' weapons, like Leonardo's Dimension Hopping Sword. I, yeah, um, well, it's it gets weird. Also, apparently these two have access to numerous different weapons held by previous Death Battle combatants, so odds are that Boomstick has numerous different guns or swords belonging to Death Battle Commands. He obviously has lightsabers, Robocop's gun, all of Terminator's arsenals, Boba Fett's EE3, Samus Aran's suit, uh, Master Chief, all of Master Chief and Doom Guy's weapons, not gonna lie. Not to mention he probably has the BFG. Wiz, on the other hand, has a cybernetic arm. He's much smarter than Boomstick. He has electrocution through his metal arm, has numerous different materials which he's gained from adventures i guess a lot like rick sanchez who will be appearing on my show so be sure to check him out i won't so say his opponent uh he has the tesseract effect he has numerous different lab experiments just based on physical stats i do think that wiz would be the winner i mean he has a cybernetic arm he's much smarter than boomstick and I, if they're going to go into that i feel like he would win but i don't think rooster teeth will be that big into the fight I mean, seriously, why would you have a winner to basically two of Death Battle's most, how do I say it, the mascots of Death Battle? Honestly, I just feel like that if this fight's going to have a winner, it would be Wiz. Boomstick is still no pushover, though. Also, apparently, Wiz's dad is dead and his mom got remarried to someone who is very similar to Boomstick. So he has access to newer different weapons similar to that before. Also, another apparent thing, Wiz has access to the Tesseract device held by Lex Luthor in DC Comics. Meaning he has the, a device that has the ability to turn someone inside out. To be fair, I honestly think that if they're going to make a winner of this fight, it's going to be Wiz. But I'm not 100% sure. Moving on. Dio versus Alucard. I'm actually pretty excited for this. I fairly enjoyed the DBX. I wasn't too big into the animation, but it was much, much better than any other animation I've seen for Alucard up to date. I've seen better animation for Dio, though. Not talking about the shows Metal Housing and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Starting off with Dio, he has access to different weapons. Throwing knives, cryokinetic abilities, these meaning he can freeze people solid. Has powerful strength and powerful physical attacks. He's able to best characters like Jonathan... Joestar, uh, and Jotaro. Also, he has access to one of the most powerful stands in the world, which has proven to be stronger than Star Platinum on so many occasions, a stand powerful enough to lift and throw buildings. The world also has light speed reaction and can keep up make Dio have light speed reaction too, as Dio is near peak physical condition and is a powerful murderer. I'm not saying that's a good thing, of course. At all. I'm not condoning his actions. However, I do think the world allows the time stop ability, which has already been said in jo jo Jotaro versus um, Kenshiro. 
due to that time stop ability, I just think that, how do I say this? Dio does have an upper advantage and most likely speed over Alucard. But Alucard is still no pushover. He, of course, has his vampire physi Sorry, that was a bad impression. Physiology, meaning he can... How do I say this? Um, has superhuman strength, speed, dual pistols, throwing knives, which he doesn't use that often, radar sense, pyrokinetic abilities, and can spawn and access demons from hell, which can... Uh, go into a different forms like jaws of powerful beasts or sometimes even cyclopses which can shoot out lasers no i didn't stutter also he has access to turn his body into mist in many of occasions and move at light speed it's not as fast as people like dio of course but i would just still say that it is incredibly fast it's still not light speed though to be honest, I would have to say that this fight is pretty evenly matched. Dio can certainly hold his own, though, being much faster than Alucard, and Alucard is likely stronger than Dio being able to take on powerful opponents. If you think that Dio is stronger due to having the world at his side, it's a lot like Jotaro versus Kenshiro. The world can activate powerful, I guess, strength, strength feats, able to keep up with the strength of Alucard, but it's still not out of the strength. Also, Alucard is far better in durability, being able to go through sheets of concrete, have a building knocked on top of them, and take powerful hits without going down. With all this and more, I just think that Alucard would be the winner to having far more power at his side. But in the end, I just think it's a matter of how Death Battle will play out the fight and how they'll portray the world. Moving on to my favorite fight, Cole McGrath vs. Alex Mercer. Not just saying because Alex Mercer and I have a special connection, A, being because I love Prototype, and B, be being because, well, you guys know my name, of course. Uh, my name is Mercer, and his last name is, yeah, you guys get it. Moving on to the fight, of course, I would just have to say Alex Mercer has access to numerous different abilities thanks to his parasitic powers. He has likely has powerful spikes, which he can grow out of his hands, powerful punches, a giant shield, a powerful hand, hand, a powerful fist, a gauntlet, basically. Can shoot out spikes at long distance, use a powerful whip, absorb and drain the energy off of others, can move at super light speed, throw trucks with ease, create a giant spike shield, he shoots and suits of armor, which can help him, can turn invisible, and can warp his body into any other person. That's that person. He is, however, beaten by nuclear radiation, but can regain his body by eating things, specifically people and organic life forms. Cole McGrath, on the other hand, has electric abilities, being able to shoot and produce electricity, call upon lightning bolts, absorb electricity at will, shoot out ice beams because he was able to get ice powers. He has lightning blades from the infamous comic series, which he can use, and of course the ability to shoot out ice and freeze people. Just because of all this physical stat power, I think the only thing that Cole McGrath's abilities will do is delay the inevitable that Alex would win. But he's still no pushover. I would just say that Alex would be the winner. Moving on, Maka Albarn versus Ruby Rose. I genuinely am pretty excited for this fight. Not gonna lie, it's pretty expected from most of the versus community, as this is one of the biggest fights up to date. Number one on this list being the one of the biggest fights. I'm not exactly sure what is the biggest death battle request, but I'm pretty sure it's number one. Moving on for this fight, starting off with the more famous character, Ruby Rose. I'm not gonna lie, Maka is still pretty cool though. Ruby likely has her speed, which is increased through her aura, being able to break concrete just by moving and kicking her legs back. Which, by the way, can shoot an enormous gust of wind, able to take the, which, which is able to take on Ren, Nora. John Ark and Pira all at once, and Pira is able to withstand powerful hits from Grimm. Ruby also has her scythe, which is able to cut through opponents with ease, allow her to leap several distances, and shoot out a powerful sniper gauge through the top. This can extend her even forward or shoot at powerful ranges. She can even drag a crow along the side of a building as w and decapitate it. Maka, on the other hand, has her soul eater. Soul eater. 
Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with Soul Eater, that's that's actually her scythe's name. Her her scythe is a person. Soul has gives her the ability to just swing her around and attack Keishin eggs, and basically eat them. Well, Soul does, not her. This allows her to create a powerful attacks and even shoot out small gusts of energy. With her Soul Resonance form, form Soul can become much larger and shoot out powerful energy beams, but at the cost of having bad knockback. She has her Black Blood dress, which can allow her to manipulate and control Black Blood like a parasitic symbiote. And she can go into her Death Scythe form-ish. Yeah, it gets complicated. And shoot out an opposable scythe blades at will. She can even control these, kind of. With all this and more, I, in terms of advantages, I would have to give Ruby the speed advantage. Maka lacks any powerful speed advantages shown, but in terms of strength, they are pretty evenly matched. Durability, I guess I would have to give that to Ruby. I mean, Ruby Silver Eyes, which we'll go into in a little bit, um, have allowed her to take powerful hits before, but they also have bad knockback too. Also, Ruby Silver Eyes very rarely affect anything else aside from the creatures of Grimm and the Fall Maidens, which Maka does not fall on either. If they say something like that completely makes no sense at all, like, oh, Maka's power is similar to the Fall Maidens, which it isn't, or something like that, I just genuinely think that I'm going to be disappointed. Moving on, I just think that with all this power at their disposal and possibly having better strength, and a far better, greater Arsenal XP, I just think that Maka would be the winner. But it really doesn't matter. We may see Ruby get a buff in Volume 8. Galactus vs. Unicron. The biggest hype I've seen ever since the last fight. This fight means a lot to many different people. The Raptor, who I have taken inspiration from to make this channel, loves this fight. Nemesis Bloodrike, who I've also taken inspiration to make my channel. Yes, I am inspired by them, if you were wondering. They love these this fight. Honestly, I love it too. I think every versus debater known to man, or pe people, have enjoyed seeing Galactus fight with Unicron. I mean, these are two cosmic beings who eat planets from two beloved series. And even if it's another DC Marvel fight or a Marvel character, it doesn't matter. Wanna know why? Because this fight is beloved, by, beloved by many. So many people like this fight. Everyone likes Galactus, at least everyone that I know so far. And so far I've never seen anyone say, oh, I, I don't like Unicron. Wanna know why? Because a lot of people like Unicron. Moving on, I just think that Galactus would be the winner of this fight. I think Galactus most likely wins 10 times out of 10. Because, you see, Unicron's power is limited by what he eats sometimes, while Galactus can literally go up and eat universes on many different occasions. Yes, he devours universes. He just doesn't because he doesn't want stomach cramps or something like that. Also, his power is much more infinite, being one of the first beings ever created. And also, let's do some quick scaling really quickly that I wanted to put in this video. Optimus Prime to Thor. Optimus Prime to the God of Thunder. Both of which were successfully able to hit Galactus and Unicron. Except when Thor hit Galactus, he let him hit at his full strength and pretended to get knocked back in modern Thor comics. While when Unicron got hit by the, um, Optimus Prime, he actually got hurt. Galactus also has devoured far greater and faced far more dangerous threats. I guess in terms of experience, you'd have to give it to Galactus too. He's one of the first beings ever made. I know the blood of Unicron can become an extremely powerful source here, and we could be going as far as to say that Galactus has superior power, but he just does. It's just true. Honestly, Galactus can manipulate and control matter stronger than Thanos can with the Infinity Stones. I did not stutter. Those of you people who consider yourselves Marvel fans for watching the movies, I did not stutter. I genuinely think that Galactus would be the winner of this fight. 
Moving on, thank you all for watching. Always be sure to like and subscribe and comment. If you enjoyed this video, always be sure to share it with your friends. And yeah, I mean, I'll be seeing y'all in the next one.